Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're working in our integration series, so we're going to be talking about different integration techniques. If you can't tell, we have a big old puzzle going on in the background, so just ignore that. Anyhow, so let's go ahead and dive into it. So one of our first techniques is just simplification. So here I see I have a rational function, I have a polynomial, I want to go ahead and see if anything factors out. So I'm going to go ahead and factor this, and we see the numerator is already factored out, and let's go ahead and try the denominator. So here we can have a 2x and then an x. And now we want to know what goes in those corresponding spots. So here we have 2x plus 1 because we have a minus x in the middle and then x minus 1 dx. So here we can see that the x minus 1s cancel out, which is the purpose of factoring, right? And so here we can go ahead and simplify this. We get 1 over 2x plus 1. If you can do this next step in your head, that's great. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and go through it. Let's go ahead and set u equal to 2x plus 1. So we get du is equal to 2 times dx, and if you want to simplify that, you can divide that 2 over to get dx all by itself. Here we can go ahead and simplify that out. So we get the integral of 1 over u, since we sent that equal to u, and then times dx, which we found to be du divided by 2. Or if you do it the other way, you end up with that 1 half on the outside, which we can take that 2 to the outside, so either way works. The integral of 1 over u du. So here when we simplify that, we end up getting the natural log of u plus some constant c. And here our last step is to plug that u back in. So we get 2x plus 1 plus c. And there we get our final solution. So here this is one of those situations that we can actually go ahead and separate out the fraction. So if this was flipped, we would not be able to do this. But since that addition is in the numerator, we can make this equal to cosine of x divided by secant of x plus sine cubed of x divided by secant of x. So let's go ahead and simplify that out, right? So we have that secant of x is equal to 1 over cosine. And if we were divided by that, that just becomes cosine squared of x. And then this other one becomes sine cubed of x times cosine of x. So we're going to go ahead and use some um, forms of simplifying this. So cosine squared of x, I'm going to go ahead and use a trig identity. And so this is equal to 1 half 1 plus cosine of 2x. And then for the second one, we're, we're actually going to go ahead and do is u, u substitution. So I'm going to go ahead and set u equal to sine of x. Whenever you see sine and cosine, usually whatever has a larger power, so in this case, the sine to the power of 3, you're going to set that inside equal to u. So here, u is equal to sine of x, so you get du divided by dx, or you can multiply that dx over right away, but we get cosine of x. And so here we can go ahead and use straight substitution if you'd like. We have du is equal to cosine of x dx. So here we have that cosine and here we have the dx. So I'm going to go ahead and actually separate this into two separate integrals so we can see what's happening a bit better. So I'll end this one with dx and we get plus and then we get u to the power of 3 du. Now we can go ahead and take the antiderivative so that one half hangs out. The antiderivative of 1 is just x plus and that becomes sine of 2x. And we're going to go ahead and divide by that scalar multiple of 2. And now for u cubed, we get u to the power of 4 divided by 4 plus c. And our last step, of course, is to put, put that u back in. So we can go ahead and multiply that 1 half. And if you want, we get 1 half x plus sine of 2x divided by 4, if I multiply that in, plus, And now that becomes sine to the power of 4 of x divided by 4 plus c. And there we get our solution. So here with long division, we have x squared minus 4x minus 1 divided by x plus 4. So let's go ahead and set up our long division. We have x plus 4 is on the outside, and then on the inside is x squared minus 4x minus 1. So here what we want is something that multiplies by x in order to get x squared. So what I'm going to get is x. And I can go ahead and show you over here. So we're going to take x, and we're going to multiply it by the whole thing. So we're going to multiply it by x plus 4, and here we get x squared plus 4x. And what we're going to go ahead and do is subtract that whole thing, so minus x squared plus 4x. So when we do that, the purpose is that the x squared minus x squared goes to 0, so that cancels out. Now if I distribute that minus sign, we end up with negative 8x, and then we're going to drop down the next one, so minus 1. So now we want something right here that multiplies by x in order to get negative 8x. So in this case, what I'm going to multiply by is negative 8. So I'll do it on the side. We have negative 8 times x plus 4. Here we end up with negative 8x minus 32. And again, we're going to go ahead and subtract that. So minus negative 8x minus 32. 
Of course, we're going to distribute that minus sign in, and we get 0x, so that cancels out. And then we get negative 1 plus 32 is positive 31. So here we have our leftovers. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this because we're going to go ahead and rewrite it. So this integral can be rewritten, and we get x minus 8 plus, and we get 31 over the dividend, plus 4. And this right here is going to be easier to integrate, right? So let's go ahead and do that. We get x squared divided by 2 minus 8x. And then plus that 31 is a constant multiple, so it hangs out, and we get the natural log of x plus 4 plus some constant c. And that right there is our solution. So that's how we can use long division to try to simplify the integral. Another one is completing the square, everybody's favorite. So here what we're going to go ahead and do is complete the square in the denominator. So he, we have negative x squared minus 8x minus 7. I'm going to go ahead and factor out that negative 1. So we get x squared plus 8x plus 7. So completing the square, what it means is we want to add something, but we also need to subtract something. We can't just magically add something. So it's like we're adding 0, and then that plus 7 hangs out. So what we do is we take our b value, right? And so that's going to be with our x. We take it, we divide it by 2, and then we square it. So that ends up being 4 squared, which is equal to 16. So we're going to add 16, but we're also going to subtract 16. That way we're adding 0, right? And we're going to go see the purpose of this. So that negative 1 is still hanging out. And here with these first three terms, this is a perfect square. We get x plus 4, quantity squared. And then negative 16 plus 7 is equal to negative 9. And so here, if we wanted, we could multiply that negative 1 back in. And so we get positive 9 minus x plus 4, quantity squared. So now that we completed the square, we can go ahead and put this back into the integral. If you want, you can go ahead and simplify this if you know exactly where it's going to go. Otherwise, I'm going to set u equal to x plus 4. So we get du is equal to just dx. And here we can go ahead and simplify this so that dx becomes a du, or you can write that on the outside, whatever you prefer. And then we have the square root of 9 minus u squared. And as we can see, this is going to be inverse sine. So we get inverse sine. And then what it becomes is u divided by whatever number this is the square root of it, right? Because that's going to represent a number squared. So here we get 3 plus some constant c. I have a video all about that. If you want to take a look at it, it has to do with inverse trig and integration. But we can replace u back in. We get x plus 4 divided by 3 plus some constant c. And there is our solution. One more little trick we have here is we can multiply by a giant 1. So kind of like how we added 0, we're going to multiply by 1. So here we have the integral of 1 over 1 plus cosine of x dx. What we're going to do here is I'm going to multiply by 1 minus cosine of x on both the numerator and the denominator because what I see is I'm going to go ahead and get a trig identity. So when we do that, we have 1 minus cosine of x in the numerator. And if you foiled out the denominator, we would get 1 minus cosine squared of x. And like I said, that is a trig identity. That is equal to sine squared of x. And then we're going to call back on one of the earlier things that we did is I'm going to separate this into two fractions. So 1 over sine squared of x, or we'll rewrite that as cosecant squared, minus cosine of x divided by sine squared of x. So like we said, this first one becomes cosecant squared of x minus, I can take one of those signs out and I get cotangent. And then that sign is still remaining in the denominator, so I'll rewrite that as cosecant. Now, when we integrate this, this is going to be much nicer, right? We get cotangent of x, and I know when I take the derivative of cotangent, it's negative cosecant squared, so I need to add a negative there. And then this other one becomes cosecant of x. And again, if I took the derivative, I would have to have a negative, so that becomes a positive, and then plus some constant c. And that right there is our solution. So these are just general integration techniques. It is a skill to learn to recognize what you need to use. So that's going to come with practice and also experience. So don't be too hard on yourself when you're first learning to integrate. But that's all I have for us in this video today. If you enjoyed this video, I have many more like it. So make sure to check out my playlist or link down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems and topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.